Hello legendary superstars of the planet Earth. It is Earth date, Monday, 17th of March, it's 2008, and you're on board Galactic Federation Druidship Earth One, and uh, we hope this transmission finds you well. On this transmission, we'll be cutting down to uh, Tommy and, uh, and myself having a brief conversation at Earth Sanctuary World Nature Center on the topic of domes, infrastructure, and then we'll uh, cross over to uh, Tommy down at uh, the Moynton Peninsula at Millicom headquarters for some further investigative stories on the wonderful, wonderful infrastructure infrastructure of round things we call domes. Don't you just love living on a sphere? Back shortly. Uh, PGS, what are we going to put on this, uh, this program? Well, Danny, this is about uh, positive global solutions in the category, category of domes. It can't be bigger, really. We're looking at uh, infrastructure that will help the, uh, the human civilization sustain themselves throughout uh, this influx of climate change. Uh, what's so good about domes? Well, we know that uh, comparative to traditional housing, that we've, well, you can't even call it traditional, really, but uh, it seems to have a strength far beyond the ordinary. That's right. Oh, well, and I, as, you, as you said, it's modular. So uh, as far as um, emergency uh, services, or, um, or mitigation in relation to uh, climate change and activities around the world. This is a, uh, a modular system that we can pretty much pack up, send away in a box, and uh, the ordinary superstar folk of the world can actually uh, put these together without any dramas. That's right, it's just so simple, it's lightweight. Uh, as you said, there's only three links that you generally use to, uh, to set up a dome. Um, anyone can build them, anyone can set them up. You can also use materials from metals. You can go into uh, natural fibres like hemp and uh, even recycled plastics. This is something that can save the planet and we can get going on now and we can literally recycle and, uh, and change the, uh, the existing infrastructure on the planet. Uh, what's most important is that we'll survive by using it. Well, uh, being a positive global solution, uh, everything that seems to uh, fall into this category seems to be a bit of a no-brainer, so uh, let's go into it a bit more detail, eh? Fantastic. Dames. Dames. Our family's company, Millicom, Millennium Communications, is now 10 years old. Its primary function is to promote awareness on the broad range of positive global solutions which exist around the world and to develop ways to ensure that these solutions are directly accessible to all the communities of the world. To help ensure our species reduces its negative impact on the planet Earth. The PGS categories are energy, food, water, shelter, utilities and well-being. Today we look at geodesic domes under shelter. Right, what changes, Joe, have we done to this one? We've obviously played with the uh, the beauty struts over in the sanctuary there where we've done the overlaps of the of the actual struts. You can see these struts here. Yeah. We've, we've now got a circular disc. Uh, what changes have we made to this one and uh, what were they pretty much intended for, Dad? Yeah, yeah, so, so this is now, what we've done is make a um, 2.5 millimetre thickness plate here. Um, so it's 15 centimetres across and uh, it just simply holds the, uh, the struts so there's um, ones with of course five and there's ones with of course six but the beauty of this it gives you a cleaner line here so when it comes to closing off and, and capping these up with large triangular tiles uh, made Dura, uh, Dura weed board it'll be uh, a lot more neater and easier to finish off. Uh, what challenges Joey have you had with this one and putting it together and uh and uh, yeah, th th there is, uh, if you look back into our, some of our early footage, you'll find our construction procedure is totally reversed because in the past I've started off with the, um, with the uh, structure from the top and uh, actually had a hoist built so I can actually build it from the top and work my way down. But without such a support, I had to uh, work the reverse. So I started from the bottom here and worked my way up and then it'll hopefully link up here to close up uh, the half sphere. So that's the difference. A bit different, but uh, hopefully within a couple of days we'll be able to close her up and it'll be finished by working in reverse. Beautiful. Like we said uh, earlier on before, Dad, we were talking about um, now that this is the, like the second mark version that we're playing with in, in a change in the hub structures and the rest of it, um, what, do, what do we reckon um, in terms of future uh, geodesics that we might change or, or add to this to even improve it further still to make it even simpler uh, for people to uh, assemble themselves. You've done this one 100% um, by yourself so it's a great 
uh, indication of a PGS solution that um, a person can put this together by themselves. Three different um, strut lengths, uh, two different uh, hub sizes, these guys, and uh, it's super simple and uh, super quick considering the, um, uh, how quick these climate changes are going. Uh, so, what do you reckon on future ones, Dad? Would we change the hub a bit more? Or well, what? down the track, you know, with, with a bit more finances, we'll be able to. Um, these triangles here, so if you could pan back a bit, look at this triangle structure. We may even do away with these um, um, with these galvanised pipes here. Yep. Um, because then uh, you won't need them as such. So all you re really need is, is a large triangle that interlock. G'day Tommy, g'day Joey, how are you both? Uh, it is Millicom Day, PGS, and uh, obviously we need to do a quick check of some of our um, essential utilities around the sanctuary preparing for our, our shutdown purposes. Just quickly from around the world, um, there's been a swarm of earthquakes in the Philippines. In Australia, uh, a protection buoy has been put out in the Coral Sea for um, impending tsunamis. Uh, in Alaska, uh, remembering that the, uh, the largest tsunami ever recorded uh, was um, post an 8.3 earthquake, the tsunami itself reached heights in excess of 520 metres, that's half a kilometre. Um, a concerning story on, uh, on millicom.com today is uh, that glaciers are disappearing at an accelerated record rate. Between the, uh, the period of 2004 and 2006, uh, the melting in fact doubled. Uh, if we look at um, uh, James Lovelock's predictions and also the, um, the analysis for the Pentagon who looked at 2020, um, it really starts making the Federation's prediction of 2012 around that date to have everything pretty much sorted out. So uh, keeping that in mind, let's do our own PGS um, uh, survey on, on our goodies and the utilities and uh, let's have a quick look and make sure everything's uh, in tip-top shape. Uh, obviously the uh, development of our dome village will um, supersede the, uh, the infrastructure that's uh, here at the moment, but uh, we certainly are going to need the, um, the extra strength and uh, reliability of the, uh, of the dome village. So let's go and have a quick look anyway. Okay, I'm here at the hybrid energy system and uh, the dome panels, sorry, the uh, solar panels are looking uh, nice and clean. Obviously our infrastructure, our, some of our original dome stuff and uh, obviously we're going to have to uh, look at the um, need to bring in a few more windmills. Although if we don't replace this one, as you guys know, we'll uh, obviously be bringing in more for the, uh, for the dome village which hopefully be um, uh, all stocked up perhaps by the end of the year which gives us about three years time in lieu to do uh, any final touches that we need. Uh, obviously a catchment of water. Beautiful. Uh, we've, uh, that rain has uh, done us very well and uh, we're still looking at around about uh, 40,000 litres of water on the property. I checked the food this morning, there's a good six months worth of uh, tucker in there. Um, and, uh, and I'll just now go over the, um, some of the utilities, uh, particularly the, um, uh, the diesel generators, etc. I hope you guys are having a great time. Uh, good luck with the, uh, the dome infrastructure. I'll talk to you guys soon. The dome's looking fantastic at Mount Martha and what improvements we make here we'll take up to the uh, centre of Australia to put into the uh, outback terrain conditions. Uh, so uh, signing out guys, this is uh, Positive Global Solutions looking at dome infrastructure and uh, what progress we've made for the uh, Project Blue Star. Hope you guys are well and we'll catch you later on. The benefits of a geodesic dome home are simple. Their structures can withstand hurricanes and other storms with far greater success than any traditional home. From a pure engineering standpoint, geodesic domes are superior to traditional square homes. Geodesic domes are the only man-made structure that gets proportionally stronger as size increases. They are lighter, require fewer materials, are more efficient, are structurally more sound and are more cost effective. When considering all these benefits of building a geodesic dome comparative to the traditional square type housing that we've used for so many decades, it makes clear sense that we should get on with the geodesic dome revolution and start preparing ourselves to live yeah. more efficiently and more in tune with the reality of climate change and extreme weather around the world. So for PGS, Positive Global Solutions, we choose domes. See you on the next transmission. 
tomorrow Danny jumps in the Federation at Freedom Fighter to check out the USA military. See you soon.